this morning. What's the most important factor for determining a coin's value? Rarity. And now, the COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in the creation of a modern rarity. When the West Point Mint was shut down due to health concerns, 240,000 emergency production 2020 American Eagle silver dollars were minted in Philadelphia for 13 days only. And that makes these coins with the P-Mint attribution the second rarest coin in the entire American Eagle bullion coin series. This extraordinary coin is now available, but only for a limited time. Just call government.com. At 1 800 386 8018. To learn more about these emergency production 2020 American Eagle silver dollar coins, call 1 800 386 8018. Call now and you'll receive a free American Coin Collector's bonus package, a $10 value free with every order. Call 1 800 386 8018 now to secure your Philadelphia Mint 2020 American Eagle silver dollar coins before they sell out. That's 1 800 386 8018. Arizona News Radio, the state's coronavirus numbers continue to improve for the first time since late June. Fewer than a 1,000 new cases were reported today, with 1,816 being reported. There were also 13 new deaths reported today. Arizonans are reacting to President Trump's executive action, giving $400 a week for unemployment benefits. Some say it's going to be rough to survive on that. Pediatric drownings are up in Maricopa and Pinal counties. That, according to the Drowning Prevention Coalition of Arizona, Lori Smith is an executive committee member of that group. Last year, up to July 31st, we only had four pediatric drownings. This year, we've had 11 pediatric drownings. She says COVID-19 is a factor in the increase of pediatric drownings. About 120 ASU students moved into downtown Phoenix's campus yesterday with the move-in staggered over six days instead of being just one day. Suns beat the Heat 119 to 112, improving to 5 and 0 after the coronavirus restart. Mike Salceda, Arizona News Radio. From the KFNX Weather Bug Weather Center for this afternoon, an excessive heat warning now in effect until Monday night at sunset. Today's high 112 with sunny skies. Clear tonight, low 85. Tomorrow Monday, sunny and hot, high 111. Sunny for Tuesday, high 110. I'm TJ Matthews from the KFNX Weather Bug Weather Center. Currently here in Midtown, we're at 108 degrees. Our next news will be in 30 minutes. Your one it breaks coming up. It's Pet Talk Today on Independent Talk 1100 KFNX. The information and opinions you hear on this radio show are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of KFNX, its affiliates, management, or advertisers. Raised by wolves with canine DNA in his blood, having trained more than 24,000 vets, helping you and your fur babies thrive, live in studio on Independent Talk 1100 KFNX. It's Pet Talk Today with Will Bangura, answering your pet behavior and training questions. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host and favorite pet behavior expert, Will Bangura. Good afternoon. I'm Will Bangura, and you're listening to Pet Talk Today on 1100 KFNX, where we take your calls and answer your pet behavior and training questions each and every Sunday afternoon from 12 to 1 p.m. Do you have a crazy cat or an out-of-control dog that, that desperately needs some training and behavior help? Are you fed up with your pet not listening? Well, I'm here to help you deal with all of your pet behavior problems. Give me a call right now and learn how to correct those unwanted behaviors. Pick up your phone. Give me a call. If you are in Phoenix or the surrounding area, the number to call is 602 602- 277-5369-602-277 KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix call toll free at 866-536-1100. And sitting across from me today is the one and only Bill Brady. How are you today? Yeah, I'm good. Did you have a pretty good week? I did. I have to tell you how much I enjoyed last week's show. Well, uh, good. Very, uh, Entertaining and some funny clips at the beginning of the show. Terrific. Well, I, I told you, you know, if this doesn't work out, I can always do a political show. So there you go. There might be an opening for there. one in the afternoon. Well, there you go. Maybe, maybe we'll do two shows. I don't know. <laughs> and sitting next to me is the lovely and charming Brittany Duchesne. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. How are you? I'm pretty good. How was your week? It was good. It was, it was quick. Went by very fast. Quick week. I had a great week this week. My, my wife, Hannah, uh, was working from home this week and got to spend a lot of time with her. You know, we're one of these really sick couples, you know, that, that 
you know, we love each other so much you just want to stick your finger down your throat, you know, <laughs> when you hear about us, you know. But, um, you know, I had a really, really tough day last week. And, you know, I do a lot of work out of the house. I got an office upstairs in, in the house. And uh, um, I didn't have time to be able to go downstairs and spend a lot of time with my dog, Boo. Okay. And so anyway, my wife, Hannah, she comes home from work that day, you know, and she goes, how's your day? And I start telling her about my day and how difficult it was. And of course, you know, she was the loving, loving wife, you know, understanding, very compassionate, lots of empathy. Um, but then I find out later, she's absolutely furious. She's furious because I did not spend enough time with the dog, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, now you got to understand the story, okay? This is a woman that, when I got married, told me, I'm not a dog person, I don't want a dog, and, and one of my dogs had previously passed away, so when I married her, I didn't have a dog, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to convince her, hey, listen, you know, I'm a dog trainer, you know, dogs are my life, I gotta have a dog. And of course, you know, she was able to use the, well, I've got the allergy thing, you know, for a while, but then of course I said, well, you know, there's hypoallergenic dogs. But anyway, she said she was furious about it, okay? And then she says to me, she goes, I'm going to have to work from home. And she literally was serious. She's got to work from home so that she can be there for the dog. Okay. (laughs) Now, 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 now listen with the whole COVID-19 thing. Okay. I begged her because she's in the medical field. I said, listen, you can do telemedicine from home. I said, please don't go into the clinic, work out of the house. I said, you know, I'm worried about your, you know, your health, your well being. I want to make sure that, you know, you don't catch the coronavirus. So, you know, don't put me at risk. Do you think that would have kept her home? <laughs> Absolutely not. But, uh, as a result of, uh, the dog, she's home from work. <laughs> so it's all about the dog now. So somebody who did not want a dog, it's all about the dog. Um, we're going to go straight into calls right now. Um, we've got uh, Sherry in Phoenix. Sherry, welcome to Pet Talk today. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. How's your weekend? Well, it could be better. I'm having an issue with my cat. What's going on with your cat? So I adopted a cat about nine months ago from the Humane Society. Uh-huh. I had been told at that time he had been seized from a hoarder house. Mm-hmm. and that um, he may have had some litter issues in the past, but if we took him home to our clean home, mm-hmm. that cats instinctively know what to do. Well, he doesn't. He <laughs> likes to pee on our furniture. We go through some good spurts, but actually lately he's been getting worse, up to twice a day peeing on our furniture, and it's now causing problems with other people in the house. I am super emotionally attached to this dog, or excuse me, my cat. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get rid of him, but I'm being cornered, (laughs) understandably so, and I need to make a move. I've tried CBD drops. I was told that would help him. It didn't. I've tried a kitten version of Prozac. It didn't help. Um, I, I don't know where to go. I called the Humane Society, asked their advice. They looked in his records and we now know that he had been returned once prior. Somebody else had adopted him and returned him for litter issues, which I was never told about. So I'm bothered that they adopted him out to me because it's been a lot of turmoil in my household due to this. But he is mine now. And um, they honestly said our only option at this point is to have him put down. He's not adoptable any longer. I scheduled an appointment, but then I backed out. He was supposed to be put down on Friday. I I'm struggling with this. What can I do to fix my cat? Well, you know, it's always stressful when you've got something like that going on. And, you know, it's always, you know, very difficult to have to rehome your husband, which is what I'm guessing is the person in the house that's having more issues with this. But there's a couple things. Um, now, I don't know, Sherry, if you took your cat to the veterinarian, but that's first and foremost. We want to rule out and make sure there's no bladder infections, no UTI infections. Um, the he other... does not have any infections. Okay, I did great. take him to the vet. Then we've got that ruled out. So the next thing we need to do um, is we got to make sure that anywhere there was ever any urine, we've got that out of there. So I don't know if you've got a, a black light, but you need to get a black light because it'll light up 
so you'll see where everything is. Then you need to use a really good enzymatic cleaner. Now, I like Get Serious Extractor. I also like CO, um, or excuse me, SCOE 10X, which you can get online. Uh, those got enzymes in it, and they will go ahead and make sure that they actually get the scent out at the level where your cat can can still smell it. So that's really important. The other thing is the litter boxes. you got to make sure that those are also extremely clean, so get all the smell out. I know it might sound goofy because they go in it, but we have to get the smell out of there as well. Now, how many litter boxes do you have? Well, I live in 540 square feet, so it's a very small condo. I used to have two. The problem was no better. We are down to one. Um, I do keep it incredibly clean. We clean it twice a day, every day. Mm-hmm. And I do use enzyme remover to the human nose. We smell mm-hmm. no cat pee. I can literally put my nose to where he just peed an hour prior. And to the human nose, we smell nothing. But we have never tried a black light. Let me tell you what I want you to do. So you know how you can go out and you can get these uh uh, pens for animals, whether it be, you know, a pen for puppies, a pen for kittens and stuff like that. We can go ahead and set that pen up. So now the cat's got a place to move around, but it's in the pen. And then what I want you to do is I want you to put two litter boxes in that pen. So now the kitten doesn't have or the cat doesn't have a lot of room to move around so it doesn't have the opportunity to be going to the bathroom in other places. It's in a more smaller confined area. Your cat's not going to want to urinate in an area where it's kind of having to stay. However, you've got two of those litter boxes there and then your cat will begin to start using the litter boxes again. Now, you're going to want to do this for at least 30 days. When you cannot supervise your cat, you've got to make sure that you've got your cat in that type of setup and that should go ahead and clear that out as far as you know the problem that you're having um, we're going to take a quick break right now uh, we need to uh, hear from our sponsors uh, you are listening to pet talk today i'm your host will bangura and this is independent talk 1100 kfnx we'll be right back do you have a dog that needs obedience training? Is your dog's bad behavior driving you crazy? You love your dog and choosing the right dog trainer is important. Hiring a dog trainer that you can trust may be what's most important. Phoenix Dog Training is the most trusted dog training company in Arizona. Phoenix Dog Training is accredited with the Better Business Bureau and has an A-plus rating that you can trust. Having an untrained and unruly dog can be frustrating, embarrassing, and even costly. All that can change with one phone call to Phoenix Dog training. For over 30 years, Phoenix Dog Training has been the Valley's number one choice for thousands of happy dog owners. Phoenix Dog Training is the winner of the Phoenix Award for Best Dog Behavior Training and impressive seven years in a row. Say goodbye to your dog's bad behavior and hello to the dog of your dreams. Call Phoenix Dog Training today at 602-769-1411. That's 602-769-1411 or visit them on the web at phoenixdogtraining.com. I can't control my emotions. Control my emotions. I can't get these thoughts out of my head. Thoughts out of my head. Thoughts out of my head. I sleep all day. I sleep all day. Or I can't sleep at all. I can't sleep at all. If I can't concentrate, I'm going to fail again. I'm going to fail again. Going to fail again. Fail again. Why would anyone want to be with me? Anyone want to be with me? My heart is beating out of my chest. Beating out of my chest. Beating out of my chest. I just can't live like this anymore. Like this anymore. I'm depressed. I'm depressed. And I'm scared. And I'm scared. And I'm scared. And I'm scared. It takes courage to reach out for help. At Mesa Psychiatry, we'll help you find the peace and calmness that's been missing for so long. Depression, fear, and anxiety don't have to define you. Together at Mesa Psychiatry, we'll begin the process of restoring your confidence and emotional well-being, bringing joy and happiness back into your life. Begin the journey of healing today by calling Mesa Psychiatry at 480-882-1014. That's 480-882-1014. Or schedule an appointment online at mesapsychiatry.com. Are you planning a trip or just going away for a day or two? I want to take a minute to talk about the folks at Paw Nanny Tammy. 
It's difficult to leave a pet behind. It's even more difficult for your pet. Forget sending your pet to a stressful boarding and kennel facility and instead give your pet and furry best friend the gift of relaxation. Staying at home with one of the professional in-home pet sitters at Paw Nanny Tim. Your pet will love chilling out with Tammy or one of her team members who will be playing with and taking care of your pet 24 hours a day where it's most comfortable, your pet's home. The other awesome thing is that they can bring in mail, water plants, trees, and even your lawn. Call Paw Nanny Tammy to inquire about having them stay with your pet while you're away. They even offer a free meet and greet to make sure that it's the perfect fit. Call 602-472-4360. That's 602-472-4360. Or visit their website, pawnannytammy.com. Raised by wolves with canine DNA in his blood. Sharing funny tales about your four-legged fur babies. Answering questions, some even ridiculous. And taking your calls. It's Pet Talk Today with your host, Will Bangura. To have your questions answered or to comment on today's show, call the KFNX listener line at 602-277-5369. 602-277-KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix call toll-free 866-536-1100. Now, back to Pet Talk Today with your host and everyone's favorite pet behavior expert, Will Bangura. And that's me, Will Bangura. You're listening to Pet Talk Today on 11. 1100 KFNX, where we take your calls and answer your pet behavior and training questions each and every Sunday afternoon from 12 to 1 p.m. Do you have a crazy cat or an out of control dog that desperately needs some training and behavior help? Are you fed up with your pet not listening? Well, I'm here to help you deal with all of those pet behavior problems. Call me right now and learn how to correct those unwanted behaviors. Pick up your phone. Give me a call. If you're in Phoenix or the surrounding area, the number to call is 602-277-5369, 602-277-KFNX. Those outside of the Phoenix area can call toll-free at 866-536-1100. And we're going to go right back to the phones. And we've got, I believe, uh, Courtney from Scottsdale. Hey, Courtney, how's it going? Good morning um, or good afternoon, good Will. Afternoon. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing okay. We... I have a uh, a Shorty puppy that will be one at the end of this month, and he's got a barking problem that he we can't contain. Um, and he also has a biting problem. He doesn't, and he doesn't listen to me. I'm the mommy, and he doesn't listen to me. If anybody else yells at him for biting my ankles when I'm walking down the hall, he stops. But I carry a wooden spoon and I tap him on his bottom when he does it. But <laughs> he continues to do it, and it hurts. Yeah. And then the barking thing, you know, it just he we can't even watch some TV shows because there's a doorbell. He'll bark a little mm-hmm. bit, which is okay, but he won't stop, and he keeps barking and barking. And I don't know how to correct it. Yeah, well, and I tried tough. one of those devices, um, you know, those um, ultrasonic devices mm-hmm. where where you, we can't hear it, and right. um, it did say on the brochure that, you know. Some dogs don't respond to it. Well, mm-hmm. he's one of those. Yeah, a lot of times they don't respond to it, or they get desensitized to it uh, very quickly. How old is your Shorky? He'll be uh, one year old okay. on August twenty second, and okay. he's smarter than smart. He just sure. he's really smart. So he, but he has me swashbuckled. I know that. Sure. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk about a couple things, and and other listeners need to understand we're not the total positive reinforcement camp here, okay? Now, we use a lot of positive reinforcement. And the last thing that we believe is that any dog should experience fear, pain, or intimidation. But we are not anti-correction. And there's a lot of trainers out there that are anti-correction. A lot of trainers will just say, well, you know, just wait. Don't just ignore the barking. Just wait it out. As long as you ignore it, it'll eventually go away. Well, how long have you been ignoring this? Courtney, how long have you been ignoring it? Oh, I try and ignore it. And it doesn't uh, work, does it? No, because no. he looks at me and he barks. Yeah, right. And he sasses at yep. me when I I look at him and I say quiet. Yep. I just use one word yep. command because yep. I know you can't get too wordy, but I go quiet, and he looks at me and he goes, mm-hmm. Rrr, and he, sure. And he sasses well, me. Well, and you know what? Now, Courtney, that when you say quiet, now that's becoming the command to bark because you're associating that with your dog's barking. 
So if your dog's barking, oh. you're saying quiet, and dogs learn by association. Now, you know, and you know, and then we start barking back, quiet, quiet, quiet. You know, we start barking right back at the dog, and and so the dog's like, yeah, let's do this, let's bark some more. It so, entices them. It can, yeah. So let me tell yeah. you what I want you to do. Okay, first of all, okay. I want you to have a leash on your dog. Does your dog wear a collar around its neck? Um, I have both a harness and a collar because okay. he's so little. Yeah. I don't. Uh, yeah. well, a harness is better for his trachea, you know. Right. I understand that. So you can have the harness on him, okay? And what I want you to do is, but have that leash on him. When okay. your dog starts to bark, I want you to slowly, gently, without hurting the dog, I want you to lift up on the leash, okay? Lift up on the leash so that your dog's front paws are just slightly up off the ground, okay? And okay. hold your puppy there, all right? And you're going to start saying quiet, 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 not barking it, Courtney. You're going to say this calmly. And as soon as your dog is quiet, you're going to lower the leash and those paws are back on the ground. Now, if your dog starts to bark again, again, lift the leash up gently. I don't want you hurting your dog. All we're doing is right. we're trying to make it a little bit uncomfortable for your dog. And a lot of dogs, well, they don't like it if their you know, front paws are up off the ground a little bit. Okay, But you want to make it just a little bit uncomfortable. Okay, um, And if you want to add more discomfort to it, you could take your other hand and you could grab one of the back legs and just kind of pull up on it. Again, don't hurt your dog. I, I can't say no, that enough. Oh, because, no. Trust me. Right, and I know you wouldn't, but you'd be surprised. And <laughs> yeah. you know, I get these, yeah. these total positive of reinforcement freaks that, you know, will will call in and just say, you know, I'm abusing the heck out of dogs or anything like that. So that's one thing I want you to begin to do. And then in situations where your dog was barking and now your dog stops barking, because you're going to have to do this for 30, 60 days. you got to be very consistent with this, okay? If you okay. make something uncomfortable happen when your dog's barking and you start saying quiet, your dog's going to understand that quiet is associated with something uncomfortable, that something uncomfortable happens when it barks. And your dog's going to stop doing that, but you got to be very, very consistent for uh, the next couple of days. Same thing with your dog biting you. Okay, you got to make it a little bit uncomfortable. Okay, all animals have a gag reflex. When your dog starts biting on you, what I want you to do is just grab your dog gently by the scruff of the neck, take that index finger, and just put it down your dog's throat. Your dog's going to do a little. <coughs> like that pull it out okay oh. and your dog's gonna be like wow i don't like to bite on her anymore because that's something i really 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 don't like okay give that a shot all right. give that a shot hopefully that will help you okay all right okay because yes i appreciate your time today thank you and have a great sunday you too courtney thank you so much and next we've got uh i believe it's teha in mesa teha did i say that correctly Hello, Teha and Mesa. Do we have Teha and Mesa? Yes, yes. There you go. Now, did I say your name correct? Almost. It's uh, the G is as it is as it sounds. So it's Teja, but Te yeah. Teja. What? What, yeah. what? What nationality is that? Where are you from? Uh, I'm I'm from India. India. Fantastic. Yeah. So, how can I help you? What's going on with your pet? What kind of pet do you have? Uh, well, this is a mini poodle, and we got him from a rescue just about two weeks ago. He's a real, real cute dog. Uh, but just I have noticed a change in behavior, which I'm not sure is normal because of the heat or what. But the, the very first few days when we had him, he was super excited to go out on walks in the morning, evening, any time of the day. Mm -hmm. But these days, he's, he gets really, really lazy, lethargic sort of behavior he exhibits during the, you know, until... Most of the day, only in the evening is when he's excited to go out. Mm -hmm. uh, the mornings are so lazy that he doesn't even want to move out of his crate to have food. I have to give him food inside the crate. Mm -hmm. uh, I At first, I thought it could be the heat, right. but I don't like... he doesn't even walk around the house, so I'm assuming it's not the heat. So I don't know what's going on with him. And how long, have you, how long have you had the dog? Two weeks. Two weeks, okay. And yeah. this was, did your dog seemingly have normal energy during the day when you first brought uh, brought the dog home? Yes, yes. For the first, I would say four to five days, he was super energetic through the day. Mm -hmm. But after that, he is only energetic around like after six o'clock okay. in the evening when he knows that it's quiet and we can go out for a walk, it's not hot and that stuff. The rest of the day when it's hot outside, he seems to be very like laying low inside as well. Mm-hmm. 
does he seem like? Let me ask you this: Is your dog eating okay? Drinking okay? Yes, perfect. We've been monitoring the food, water intake, down to the right. milliliters, and yes, it's doing perfectly. Well and there. and then later in the evening, the dog's got normal energy as far as what you can tell. Yep, absolutely. Okay. He well, plays. He's super excited. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, yeah. So one of the things you know, this might be your dog's pattern. You know, all dogs okay. are different, just like people. You know, the first two weeks you bring your dog home, it's like, you know, it's Disneyland. Holy cow, man. I'm out of the rescue. I'm out of the shelter. And it's like, I've got this new home. Do you have children? Uh, no. Don't have children? Just okay. So they're husband. not, so they're not, they're not like, uh, if you don't have children, then they're not making, you know, the, the puppy and they're not making the dog exhausted. But th- this might be your dog's pattern. It sounds like in every other way, that, you know, your dog, you know, is normal. Um, have you done any training, you know, done any easy training with your dog? Um, he was halfway through learning the sit command from the posture, so we went ahead and we taught him to sit. Uh-huh. But that's about it. But he knows his name. When we call him, he comes, and mm-hmm. then he sits. But that's about it. He doesn't sure. do anything more. Well, you know, if it's something that, you know, you're really concerned about, you know, what I would recommend is do some things that are enriching for, for the dog. You know, start having fun. Make, you know, playtime during the day a big deal. You know, if you're doing a lot of play at night and that's where, you know, if your dog's expending all of its energy there, you know, maybe it is tired. Maybe it just doesn't want to do anything during the day. It could be the heat. You know, there's a lot of different things that could be going on. But I would start trying to engage, uh, you know, the dog in play. I would start trying to do all kinds of things with it. We need to take a break here in a second. I am your host, Will Bangura, and you are listening to Pet Talk Today on 1100 KFNX, where we are taking your calls and answering your pet behavior and training questions each and every Sunday from 12 to 1. If you've got a question about your pet's behavior, maybe you've got a dog or a cat that's out of control, give us a call. If you're in Phoenix or the surrounding area, the number to call is 602-277-5369, 602-277-KFNX. We will be right back after this. of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the U.S. has topped 5 million. Correspondent Victor Blackwell. The California Department of Health reported 7,371 new cases. The Florida Department of Health reported more than 8,500 cases. Health officials in Texas said the state's seven-day COVID-19 positivity rate had risen to more than 19 percent, the highest seven-day average since the pandemic began. President Trump has bypassed Congress and is providing coronavirus relief measures. Correspondent Sarah Westwood with a statement from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer. We're disappointed that instead of putting in the work to solve America's problems, the president instead chose to stay on his luxury golf course to announce unworkable week and narrow policy announcements to slash unemployment benefits that millions desperately need and endanger seniors, Social Security, and Medicare. I'm Ann Cates. Are you paying too much for term life insurance? There's a tremendous price war among the major term life companies. Rates have dropped dramatically in the past few years. For example, a man age 45 non-tobacco user. One million dollars of coverage, $75 per month level rate for the next 10 years. Or a man age 50 non-tobacco can obtain $500,000 of coverage for a monthly premium of only $110 per month, guaranteed not to change for the next 20 years. That's right, level rate guaranteed not to change for the next 20 years. If you're a smoker, we have great rates available for you as well. At Term Busters, we specialize in policies of $500,000 and above. If you're looking for new or replacement term life insurance, call today for a quote at 1-800-569-5440. That's 1-800-569-5440. You're probably paying more than you should. Call Term Busters, 1-800-569-5440, or visit our website at termbusters.net. Remember, 1-800-569-5440. Rates and availability may vary by state. Sample rate quotes based on preferred non-tobacco underwriting. Exam required to qualify. From the KFNX Weather Bug Weather Center for this afternoon, an excessive heat warning now in effect until Monday night at sunset. Today's high 112 with sunny skies. Clear tonight, low 85. Tomorrow Monday, sunny and hot, high 111. Sunny for Tuesday, high 110. I'm TJ Matthews from the KFNX Weather Bug Weather Center. Currently here in Midtown, we are at 108 degrees. 
Our next news will be in 30 minutes or when it breaks. Coming up, we've got the second half of Pet Talk Today on Independent Talk 1100 KFNX. Raised by wolves with canine DNA in his blood. Sharing funny tales about your four-legged fur babies. Answering questions, some even ridiculous. And taking your calls, it's Pet Talk Today with your host, Will Bangura. To have your questions answered or to comment on today's show, call the KFNX listener line at 602-277-5369. 602-277-KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix call toll-free 866-536-1100. Now, back to Pet Talk Today with your host and everyone's favorite pet behavior expert, Will Bangura. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Will Bangura, and you're listening to Pet Talk Today on 11. 1100 KFNX, where we take your calls and answer your pet behavior and training questions each and every Sunday afternoon from 12 to 1 p.m. If you've got a crazy cat or if you've got a dominant dog or just a pet that is just driving you crazy, give us a call. If you're in Phoenix, the number to call is 602 602- 277-5369-602-277-KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix can call toll-free at 866-536-1100. And we're going to go right back to the phones, and I believe we've got Maria in Phoenix. Hey, Maria, welcome to Pet Talk today. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing all right. Just a little on the curious side here. Uh, one of two questions. Um, I've had uh, my two cats since they were born. I was there at the birth of one of them and the other one. I got there five minutes after she was uh, birthed. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that they're not technically litter mates, mm-hmm. and I know that, you know, it's not unusual to have siblings in a litter of cats to not really like one another, but... How do I get her from slapping her brother on the face? And it's not like malicious, mm-hmm. but she'll just randomly go up to him and just like make these chomping type of motions at him and she'll just like slap him right between the eyes. Little kitty kung fu, um, huh? Yeah, this happens, this happens during mealtime. Um, they both get fed at the exact same time. I'll put mm-hmm. their plates down at the same time to make sure that they're not trying to yep. compete with one another. Mm-hmm. Um, I give him a little less because he wastes a lot of it. He'll take a few bites and he's done. Mm-hmm. Uh, she gets the majority of it because she cleans it, and then she goes to his plate and she eats the rest of his. Got but it. my Got problem it. is trying to keep her from constantly bullying him because yeah. he's just one big 17-pound baby. Now, Maria, is this only, is she only bullying him uh, during feeding time? Um, sometimes it'll happen during bed. Um I'll be getting the bed ready, and I'll pull back the covers, and she likes to cuddle in and nuzzle with me mm-hmm. and get in between the crook of my arm, mm-hmm. and he likes to get right behind me and sleep up against my back. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it's bedtime, he'll get on his side of the bed, she'll get on hers, and she'll just kind of walk over there like a freaking bulldog and just back, right between the eyes and walk back to her side. <laughs> so and, I don't know and, if and he's not standing up for himself, huh? No, well, every so often he'll kind of slap back or he'll just kind of, like, lean back and just kind of hiss at her. Yeah. It, and I'll reassure him. I'm like, you know, it's okay. I'll pick mm-hmm. him up. I'll love mm-hmm. on him. I'll tell him what a good boy he yeah. is. And just like any child, I'll turn around and I'll tell her that's yeah. not nice. We yeah. don't do that kind of thing. And he'll get positive reinforcement for the good things he does. But, you know, it... it well, I just want them to kind of get along a little bit better. And the second question is, how do I get them to stop licking plastic? Well, get rid of all the plastic. That's that's. What that's <laughs> no, let, let me let me go to your first uh, question. Okay, now here this is I don't know this might sound crazy, but let me ask you this, Maria. The problem with your cat batting the other cat um, is this something that really bothers him, or is this something that bothers you more than him? Uh, he's very sensitive. I mean, I kind of think it's funny every so often because mm-hmm. they'll just kind of go at it and sure. just kind of do this, like, heated standoff in the middle of the room and just mm-hmm. walk away from each other. But he's a very sensitive cat, and he'll come in here, and he'll just kind of whine and cry for me, and he'll want to be loved on, and I don't feel like I give him enough attention. 
because my girl, the one who's beaten up on him, she's mm-hmm. been sick with some kind of uh, lymphomic um, distress. Okay. And um, well, let me talk. Let me talk about this. You know, if it's something that's really bothering you, or if it's something that's bothering him, and that's what I would take a look at too. Is you know, first of all, I mean, th- some of this is very normal behavior. You know, for cats to get into it, it doesn't sound like you know it's it's at the point where you know anybody's hurting anybody. But you know, if it's really bothering you, what you might want to try is, you know, get yourself a spray bottle and when she starts to go ahead and starts, you know, that kitty kung fu stuff, just get out there and, you know, give her a couple sprays and then see what happens. Now, your timing's got to be really good, okay? Make sure that, and your aim, your aim's got to be good too, so you might want to practice aiming with that spray bottle, but give that a shot and, and see if that, you know, doesn't help a little bit. As far as the plastic, licking the plastic, same thing. Water bottle. Starts to look in the plastic. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask, do you happen to have <laughs> any other suggestions? Because when I get the bad kitty bottle out, she likes it. she'll go up to the nozzle and she'll drink the water. She'll, she goes up to the nozzle. What, what is it, what, what's it like when you spray her with it? <laughs> she'll come up to it before I can get more than just three or four shots off. And she'll just stand there and look at me and kind of like one of those things of I dare you. Okay. Do it. Do you, do, live, do you live in a home or do you live in an apartment? No, I live in a home. <laughs> okay, get yourself a really loud whistle. Okay. Get a loud whistle. When that happens, <laughs> just give it a really harsh blow, okay? Again, you know, as far as any animal, I don't care if it's a dog, whether it's a cat, um, they're going to learn two ways. They're going to learn to stop doing behaviors when there's something associated with it that's uncomfortable, and they are going to learn to do things when they have something positive associated with what you want them to do. Um, we're going to go back to the phones. And our next caller, I believe, is is it Janet in uh, Peoria? Janet, welcome to Pet Talk today. Hi. Hello. Hey, welcome. <laughs> yeah. How's your weekend? It's hot. <laughs> it's hot? You must be here in Phoenix where I am, huh? Yeah, it's hot. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I have a crazy dog, and I'm not sure what to do about him. He's um he's a little over a um, year and a month, year and five months. Uh huh. And he um I had to have his tail amputated because he chewed the crap out of it. Mm-hmm. And now he's going after his little leg. He's it's crazy. He gets himself into like, at first when I saw it, I thought he was just chasing his tail. I thought, uh-huh. oh, how cute. No, it's not cute. It's very vicious. So it sounds like he's kind of compulsively chewing on it. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And he just, like, let's say I've gone for the day and yeah. I come back. Mm-hmm. He does his, you know, runs himself in a circle and bites at his leg. And mm-hmm. He's always nipping at his leg. Mm-hmm. But he gets. Some days it's worse than other days. Yeah. He's been on all kinds of medication, and I stopped doing that because I didn't think it was doing any good. What kind of medication was he on? Um, he was on um, a mood leveler, which never helped. Mm-hmm. He's always doing this. Well, I mean, I'm not a veterinarian, so I'm not giving medical advice, but one of the things that, that I recommend that um, our clients – talk to their vet about because this is obviously obsessive compulsive behavior and there are some really good medications out there uh, for obsessive compulsive behavior one of them is clomipramine okay you might want to talk to uh, your veterinarian about possibly uh, see if clomipramine if your vet thinks that that would be something appropriate for your dog now the other thing is that you got to understand these medications have a um, a wide range in terms of dosing. You know, there's the low end and okay. there's the high end, okay? And some of these medications take anywhere from 10 days to even a month to really build up. So uh-huh. if you're at one particular dose, you need to let it kind of build up and see how your dog's responding to that. And then maybe okay. you have to go ahead and increase the dosage as well. So it's something that, okay. um, you know, maybe the medication you already were on was something, you know, that might have worked, but maybe you were on too low of a dose. I don't know. But I would go okay. back to your vet, yeah. okay, and I would talk to them about medication and, uh, you know, what, what we find anyway that, that works pretty good uh, with the clients that we have if their dog has. Actually, it's called obsessive compulsive syndrome, a little bit different. We call it something 
different than with people, but the clomipramine uh, tends to okay. help. So give that a shot, okay? Hopefully that helps you. Okay. What was that medicine called again? It's called clomipramine. Don't ask me to spell that because I'm the world's worst okay. speller, okay? I think I got it. Okay. All right. Thanks Thank you again. So much. Absolutely. Thanks for your call. And we've got one more. Who do we have? We we've- have Deanna and Glendale. Deanna and Glendale, welcome to Pet Talk today. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How's your day? Um, pretty good. Pretty good. You got a question yeah. for me about a pet? You got a crazy dog or cat? What do you got there? Um, she's a two year old Czech, uh, German Shepherd. Okay. And she's very, very focused, very driven. Yep. Uh, or attentive and, you know, she's very responsive to food and, mm-hmm. and her toys. Mm-hmm. Um, and she is too, um, I don't know what to say, whether it's protective, but I don't know why she feels the need to, to do this, but my daughter will come, uh, near me. The dog is Sophie. She could be full on sleeping in another room. And then she hears my daughter coming into a room that I am in and Sophie will literally run to the other to where we are to intercept mm-hmm. and um then she's she used to just lay at my feet but now she's you know gone to my daughter's area where she we could be in the same room and she'll lay down right by my daughter is if to say okay you don't you don't go anywhere you don't get mm-hmm. to move mm-hmm. and we also have a cat and they play nicely and they go on walks with us um but then Sophie will become a little too much, you know. Um, she doesn't, you know, growl or she's not aggressive like that, but she just plays really rough. Sure. So Let me ask you a question about play Sophie. Play. Uh-huh. So yeah. is Sophie a purebred German Shepherd from uh, the Czech Republic? Yes. Okay. And do you know what kind of breeding lines that she came from? Do you know if they were breeding for... Uh, was it a working dog line? Was it a sh- uh, show line? Was it comp- working? Working, okay. And, and do you do um like Schutzund or PSA Mondo Ring? Are you doing any kind of working um uh, sports with with the dog? Um, well, no, I, I guess not because none of that sounds familiar to me. We. We throw the ball. We, we're like, okay. she's very active sure. and she fetches, but yep. when she gets a toy, mm-hmm. she get, she's super fast, yep. but she'll get the toy and throws everything into it. Yep. Well, let me, let me just say this, okay? And, and this is a problem yep. because a lot of people don't get this. When you get a working dog line, a German yeah. Shepherd working dog line, especially when you get it from the Czech Republic, who breeds probably some of the best working dogs that are out there as far as German shepherds, well, okay? she was bred here. Well, because, okay, because bred here, is- but from Czech lines, okay? Okay, yeah, yeah. sorry. And these dogs, they need a job, and the job is not throwing a ball. These dogs need to be you know, doing protection sports, you know, they do Schutzen, they do, which is a protection sport where it's, you know, lots of agility, they're, they're doing yeah. bite work, they're doing all kinds of things. And a lot of times these lines are way too much dog for a normal pet owner because they're from a working line. They, they, these are the type of dogs that are either competing in sports or they end up in law enforcement or the military. But that being said, you've got what you got, okay? But yeah. one of the things that I recommend that you do, first of all, with this dog, you need to get involved in some kind of, first and foremost, very high-end obedience training. The dog needs a job. You know, it's Arizona. It's hot. How about dock diving? You know, you can get the dog involved in dock diving. It's got a lot of drive. That's a great sport, something where you can channel all this energy into. But the other thing is, if are you doing any obedience training with the dog? And I mean yeah. formal, formal obedience training. Well, we did that when we first got her. She was about four and a half yeah. months. Well, see, a dog four like this months. being a working dog, it never ends. You have to continue okay. to, to keep on working that dog. And, and you gotta start establishing the fact that, you know, you guys are in control. And how old's your daughter? Uh, she's 18. Okay, so is your daughter working with the dog? Well, we all kinda do. Okay, but this is, I, I want mean, you to hear me now. This oh. is a working dog. 
and you guys have to really take on a strong leadership role with this dog. This dog needs to be working hard every day and your daughter needs to be a big part of that because obviously uh this dog does not respect your daughter and one of the biggest things that she can do is start doing obedience training um formal obedience training get a trainer get a trainer even if you had a trainer get another trainer get somebody in there to help you with this dog because otherwise you might have a whole lot a uh, bigger set of problems down the road because this is a, a working dog breed. And when you've got a working dog breed, um, it's a lot for someone, uh, you know, who is a looking for a companion dog. They're not the same. It's difficult uh, for a lot of people to be able to handle that type of dog. I'm your host, Will Bangura, and you're listening to Pet Talk today on 1100 KFNX. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break so we can hear from our sponsors We'll be right back. Don't go away. I can't control my emotions. Control my emotions. I can't get these thoughts out of my head. Thoughts out of my head. Thoughts out of my head. I sleep all day. I sleep all day. Or I can't sleep at all. I can't sleep at all. If I can't concentrate, I'm going to fail again. I'm going to fail again. Fail again. Why would anyone want to be with me? Want to be with me? My heart is beating out of my chest. Beating out of my chest. Beating out of my chest. I just can't live like this anymore. Like this anymore. I'm depressed. I'm depressed. And I'm scared. And I'm scared. And I'm scared. And I'm scared. It takes courage to reach out for help. At Mesa Psychiatry, we'll help you find the peace and calmness that's been missing for so long. Depression, fear, and anxiety don't have to define you. Together at Mesa Psychiatry, we'll begin the process of restoring your confidence and emotional well-being, bringing joy and happiness back into your life. Begin the journey of healing today by calling Mesa Psychiatry at 480-882-1014. That's 480-882-1014. Or schedule an appointment online at mesapsychiatry.com. Are you planning a trip or just going away for a day or two? I want to take a minute to talk about the folks at Paw Nanny Tammy. It's difficult to leave a pet behind. It's even more difficult for your pet. Forget sending your pet to a stressful boarding and kennel facility and instead give your pet and furry best friend the gift of relaxation. Staying at home with one of the professional in-home pet sitters at Paw Nanny Tammy. Your pet will love chilling out with Tammy or one of her team members who will be playing with and taking care of your pet 24 hours a day where it's most comfortable, your pet's home. The other awesome thing is that they can bring in mail, water plants, trees, and even your lawn. Call Paw Nanny Tammy to inquire about having them stay with your pet while you're away. They even offer a free meet and greet to make sure that it's the perfect fit. Call 602-472-4360. That's 602-472-4360. Or visit their website, pawnannytammy.com. Do you have a dog that needs obedience training? Is your dog's bad behavior driving you crazy? You love your dog and choosing the right dog trainer is important. Hiring a dog trainer that you can trust may be what's most important. Phoenix Dog Training is the most trusted dog training company in Arizona. Phoenix Dog Training is accredited with the Better Business Bureau and has an A-plus rating that you can trust. Having an untrained and unruly dog can be frustrating, embarrassing, and even costly. All that can change with one phone call to Phoenix Dog training. For over 30 years, Phoenix Dog Training has been the Valley's number one choice for thousands of happy dog owners. Phoenix Dog Training is the winner of the Phoenix Award for Best Dog Behavior Training and impressive seven years in a row. Say goodbye to your dog's bad behavior and hello to the dog of your dreams. Call Phoenix Dog Training today at 602-769-1411. That's 602-769-1411 or visit them on the web at phoenixdogtraining.com. Raised by wolves with canine DNA in his blood. Sharing funny tales about your four-legged fur babies. Answering questions, some even ridiculous. And taking your calls, it's Pet Talk Today with your host, Will Bangura. To have your questions answered or to comment on today's show, call the KFNX listener line at 602-277-5369. 602-277-KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix call toll-free, 866-536-1100. Now, back to Pet Talk Today with your host and everyone's favorite pet behavior expert, Will Bangura. 
Yes, I'm Will Bangora, and you are listening to Pet Talk Today on Independent 1100 KFNX, where we take your calls and answer your pet behavior and training questions each and every Sunday afternoon from 12 to 1 p.m. We still have time for a few calls, so give us a call if you're in Phoenix or the surrounding area. The number to call is 602-277-5369, 602-277-KFNX. If you're outside of the Phoenix area, you can call toll-free at 8 Eight six six five three six eleven hundred, and we are going to go right back to the phones. And I think we've got Jody in Apache Junction. Hey, Jody, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. How's your weekend? I'm doing great. I hope you're having a great, safe weekend. Well, thank you. What's going on with your pet? What kind of pet do you have? I have a seven. She's he's about seven or eight months old, Chihuahua mix. Um, he has um, Dotson and Pinchy mix in him, and I can't potty train him. Okay, how long have you had? How long have you had the dog? About a month. Okay, and the funny thing is, he he goes poop in the bathroom. Well, isn't that word we should be going in the bathroom, right? No. I know. <laughs> but not isn't in it weird? But not in your bathroom, right? Okay. Well, right. Let me tell yeah, you let, let me tell you what you need to do as far as potty training, okay? Because um we we've, we've got just a little bit of time and I and this is a this is a big deal. You know, a lot of people have problems uh potty training their pets. The number one rule when it comes to potty training is supervise or confine. And that's until you've had a month or more of no accidents. And what do I mean by that? That means if you cannot have your dog in your eyesight, then you need to have that dog crated. Now, I don't want your dog living in a crate, okay? But the biggest reason why you have to have the dog in your eyesight or have the dog crated is that when the dog has an accident, there's got to be a consequence. And one of the reasons why people cannot get their dogs potty trained is because they're going all the time in the house. They sneak away from you and they go and there's no consequence. And by the way, you cannot correct the dog after the fact. Oh, they might give you that look like, you know, you, you think that they're guilty, but they're not. They just know that you're upset. And that's what that look is. The look is, I know mom's upset. It's not that they're guilty. They have no clue if you don't catch them in the act. So supervise, have them in your eyesight, and when you can't, then you need to crate them. The other thing is get your dog out every two hours outside for four minutes. Make sure you're out there with some very high-value treats. As soon as the dog goes to the bathroom, reward your dog. And again, supervise or confine. I recommend people actually put the leash on the dog. Keep the dog with you. You know, you can go from one room to the next, move the dog along, move the dog along with the leash. That's something that, you know, you need to do. Um, so hopefully that helps you. Hopefully, and anybody else that has, you know, a dog that needs uh, potty training. And, and I was talking to the lady that had the cat. And the other thing I told her, I'm going to say the same thing to dog owners. You have to have a product that has enzymes in it that is going to get rid of the smell of the urine, not just for you and I, the human, but you've got to be able to get rid of that smell at the level that the dog can smell. And their noses are incredible. They can smell one drop of blood one mile away. So I guarantee if you're just using regular household cleaner, you know, you can get rid of the odor for yourself. You can get rid of the stain for yourself. But you need to get an enzyme-based product like Nature's Miracle, get Serious Extractor, SCOE10X. Those are all really good uh, brands of uh, uh, cleaners that have enzymes in it that will go ahead and get uh, that smell out. You need to have a black light. You got to go throughout the house with a black light. Everything that lights up bright, that's something that you know that you have to clean up. And so that's a really important thing. Um, we're almost out of time, but um, are you a fan of uh, the Kardashians, Brittany? You know, I used to be. Yeah. No, it's just a lot. Kim Kardashian, you, you like her? Uh, 
Some days. Some days. <laughs> well, apparently, um, she got two new Pomeranian dogs. Now, she already had one, and I guess her daughter, North, that's her daughter's name, North, picked out the name of her first Pomeranian, and they called that dog Sushi. Okay? So anyway, so Kim Kardashian gets these two new Pomeranian puppies, and she automatically knew that she wanted these newest members of the family to be named after foods as well. And she kind of wanted to stay with the whole Japanese food type of theme uh, with with these dogs. And I guess she, on social media, I don't know if you follow her on, on Twitter or, or the, the tweet box or whatever they call that, uh, <laughs> but um, or, or uh, Facebook. But apparently she put the word out and she was asking her fans to help her in, in naming her two pooches. And I guess she got just a ton of ideas as far as that goes. Um but anyway, Kardashian was eager to get, you know, these names picked and I, and it was rumored that she wants the white baby girl Pomeranian to be named Saki. And apparently she wants the black baby boy to be named either Soba Noodle or Soy Sauce. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, Soba Noodle or Soy Sauce. What do you think's a good name for them? I think wasabi. Oh. <laughs> I'm Will Bangura. This is Pet Talk Today, and you're listening to Independent Talk 1100 KFNX. We'll see you next week. The IRS finally caught up with Louie. I hadn't paid my taxes in eight years. I owed the IRS a lot of money. Louie was in deep trouble. We're going to take